Nvidia failed in its attempts to buy ARM holding for 40 billion in 2020 due to regulation issues. However, over the last few weeks, we can see they now have a stake worth 147 million in this company. Let's find out whether or not this is a company we should be looking to add with the boom of artificial intelligence. It has been on a very strong run since its IPO last year. We're going to take a little of a lot of information. We're going to look at their latest earnings with their revenues up 14%. We'll also look at their top line over the last few years to see whether or not both top line and bottom line are increasing the way we would expect. We'll also look at the health of the company, their total cash versus their total debt, and we'll see exactly how well they've performed versus some of their competitors over the last few years. We'll also run it through the screener for insider buys and insider sells over the last few months. And we'll look to the institutions to see whether or not they're increasing their position within their own portfolios. And don't forget, we will take a look at some of their financial metrics to see whether or not this is in line with what we expect from a very strong AI company. As always, we will run it into the stock valuation model, getting to the intrinsic value as well as our acceptable buy price, given that investor margin of safety and look towards Wall Street to see their expectations over the next 12 months. And take a look here for a little brief narration. Essentially, what ARM do is they architect, develop and license these high performance, low cost efficient IP, which is their intellectual property for the CPUs, the GPUs and NPUs. So ultimately, what this company does is a license, as we can see, the instruction set for these chips to their partners who ultimately make these chips with any customizations that they want for their own unique application. 70% of the world's population used ARM-based products. Over 280 billion of these chips have been shipped. 99% of these smartphones run on these ARM-based processors. So ultimately, you will have this in your phone. And we can see 50% of all chips with processors are ARM-based. So a lot of uses throughout the world right now. And what we want to have a very quick look at is the company. Now, since its IPO, up 77.44%. In fact, that is just from this year. And over the last year, we can see around $51 in its IPO of September 2023. Nearly tripled from that. So very, very strong performance if you have bought since that point. It is trading near that 52-week high, but it does have an extremely high P, which we'll touch upon, and its forward earnings per share is $1.20. Something just to understand, the market cap is around $137 billion, so a lot smaller than NVIDIA, which sits at nearly $2 trillion. In terms of their top line, as always, whilst we do look for 3 to 7% growth year on year for companies, with these large tech companies, companies around the artificial intelligence boom, we are seeing a very, very large increase. March 21 then, 2 billion on their top line. March 22, 2.7 billion. And what we note here is in March 23, 2.7 billion. So we can see, in fact, from March 22 to March 23, it was pretty flat, but we are expecting their full March 24 report fairly soon. And just based on the trailing 12 months, whilst we do see an increase from 2023, it isn't as rapid as what we saw when we took a look at NVIDIA. In terms of their bottom line, what we can see again, 388 million in 2021, nice growth to 2022 of 549 million. But when we see that drop into 2023, it is a bit questionable given how high this company is trading at and how quickly that share price is growing. In terms of the trailing 12 months, well, we do expect a drop to their bottom line based on this information. When we get the full annual port, we will break it down. But what we can see is their bottom line is very inconsistent. That doesn't necessarily follow their top line. In terms of a quick health check, then total cash versus total debt, 1.6 billion of cash in 2022. 2.4 billion from their latest report so whilst they do hold a fair amount of cash this has increased over the last few years and when we compare this to their total debt numerically and directionally we can see in fact it is pretty small 261 it did drop slightly as well to 221 million so they do hold a lot more cash than they do total debt so no worries there especially when we look at that net debt to EBITDA metric in terms of their performance well over the last year bearing in mind they did recently IPO they are up 188 percent which as we can see is an incredibly strong performance far outperforming the second best which we have here is intel up 71 percent 
which will surprise a lot of people given they did have a dividend cut last year. So as always, they have had a very strong performance, but do bear in mind past performance isn't an indicator of future. Now taking a look at the insider buys and sells, what we typically do, run it through all transaction types, buys and sells, minimum 100 shares. Now we've had to go over the last year just to be transparent and show that over those last 12 months, there has been no insider buying as well as no insider selling. What about the institutional ownership? Well, that sits at around 170 in terms of the number of buyers, 186 million worth of sales by these institutions over the last 12 months. But we see a lot more buying, 2.6 billion over the same period. So again, we can see institutions do love this stock a lot more than they don't. Q3, their largest buy, in fact, there were no sales given that it had just IPO'd, 1.5 billion. And even in their latest quarter, whilst we do see some selling of 186 million, a lot more buying, 1.1 billion. So again, just remember, just because these institutions are buying a lot of shares of these companies, do not fall into the trap of just copying and always, always do your own due diligence. Now, in terms of just some things we want to point out in terms of their quarter three highlights for FY24, their top line is up 14% year on year, which is positive. Their licensing and other revenue as part of that is up 18%. Royalty revenue up 11%. So we are seeing some nice double digit growth. But do bear in mind that share price has rocketed up and we are seeing only low double digit growth. Something just to bear in mind. One thing that is very, very nice to see is their trailing 12 months free cash flow up 63% year on year. And you know how important that free cash flow is. If you're a regular member of this channel, it is one of those that we do think is very key. Now, the other thing that we just wanted to point out within this select guide, and you can obviously obtain that just by going on their website, is that, that quarter revenue year on year. Now, if you have watched our NVIDIA report and review, you will notice their quarterly increase is something to behold. Very, very strong, especially over the last few quarters. With ARM Holdings, just bear in mind their quarter on quarter, we don't even see increases every year. For example, Q1 to Q2 last year. So just bear that in mind. In fact, from Q2 to Q3, there isn't a very large movement. So when you are looking at your investment thesis that we will come on to, especially for that stock valuation, do bear these in mind when we're looking at the forward looking numbers in terms of the next five to 10 years. So let's jump into some of their metrics. Now, before we take a look at this just to let you know we have released our latest free weekly newsletter article. If you want to grab a copy of this and have access to these other articles which are completely free, do click on that pinned comment below. Now the free cash flow is one that we all draw your attention to. Earnings always susceptible to manipulation by management through accounting. What we want to show here is in 2021, it was pretty high, $1.04. Now, it did decrease in 2022. However, we have seen it bounce back up nicely in 2023 to 63 cents. And they are expecting a 50% increase to their free cash flow over the next 12 months with expectations around 93 cents. Now, keep that in mind as we will be using and talking about some of those figures when looking at the valuation. In terms of the sales growth, well, 2022, 33%, very solid. And as we mentioned, they did have a slight drop in 2023 of around 1%. But 2024, they are expecting some nice increases given Q3 that we just went through was up around 11 to 18%. So again, it is a little bit inconsistent for a company that has rocked it up, but then some could argue that it was already undervalued at the IPO stage. And again, we'll take a look at that when we take a look at the valuation numbers. Total sales then, 2 billion in 2021, 2.7 billion in 2023. So it is increasing, but again, we can clearly see that inconsistency of a little drop from year on year movement. Shares outstanding then. Always we like to see share buybacks returning excess cash to investor pockets. Unfortunately, over the last few years, they have in fact issued shares, so your position would be diluted, but very minimal. And when you compare this to the share price return as a shareholder, you probably wouldn't be worried too much. But again, do bear in mind, given it just IPO'd, you would have just seen the increase from 1.03 to 1.04 over the last 12 months. ROIC, what I want to see here is a minimum 10% to give me faith that management are able to effectively allocate their capital. Nice to note, double digits year on year over the last two years, looking very solid. And this is something I would want to see maintained over the next few years, especially given that price that we're about to discuss. Operating margin, nice to note it has been increasing over the last few years. Always nice to note operational efficiency by management. 
on the free cash flow margin, very strong, even at that 24% level, which is a little bit of a drop from that 53%. So even though we see that very, very strong, we want to see here a minimum of around 12%. So nice to note that very high double digit number. Finally, the net debt to EBITDA, so earnings before interest tax, depreciation, amortization. As always, this gives us the faith around the dividend safety, given they don't currently pay a dividend. This essentially shows us the balance sheet strength. So what we're saying here is, in fact, it wouldn't take them even one day to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand in 2023 or 2022, and the same for 2024 expected. So looking very positive in some of these metrics. So let's get into the main part of this, which is the valuation. As always, if you do enjoy the content, values being provided, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. Now, typically we would run through every single one of these models on the show when we do our deep dives. However, given they aren't re all relevant to ARM, um, we're gonna jump straight into the discounted cash flow. Now, as they have just IPO'd, we only have this information that we screen on screen available to us. The average growth around 59%. This is again just using one year's data. Moving forwards for next year, analysts are expecting and the management around 50%. So what we've done here is we've gone lower than the average, which is purely the year on year increase. We've gone lower than the expectation of 50% and we've gone for around 35%. Now using that, we get the present value of the future free cash flows alongside that discount rate. We've added that to the cash, subtracted total debt, got to the equity value, divided by shares outstanding. And we can see based on this, we get an intrinsic value of around $117, which is a sign of overvaluation. Now, just if we did use what management were expecting, over the next year or 50%, we would be looking at a price which is nearly twice the current value. But you do need to bear in mind, we are forecasting out in the future for at least 10 years. So if you were expecting 50%, your thesis would have to be 50% over the next 10 years at a minimum. Again, we have been conservative in what we believe at around that 35% mark. So again, we do see that essential overvaluation sign. So in today's episode, as we mentioned, the intrinsic value is purely just the DCF price which comes to $117. Don't forget you can grab a copy of this valuation model to get to the intrinsic value and acceptable buy price of companies in your own portfolio by clicking on that pinned comment below. Margin of safety, as always, then we use a starting point of 10% if we believe it has a wide moat, strong financial metrics and good forward-looking data. For ARM, we would be looking at around $105 for that 10% margin of safety. And we can see when looking at that trading price that is still within that 52 week range. So we see right now the intrinsic value is significantly below that current price of $147. Again, people will be looking for even a 20% margin of safety of $93. And if you're looking around 25%, around 88. In terms of Wall Street and what they forecast over the next 12 months, well, they have a price target of $100 and they basically see upside of negative 32%. They do believe that Arm Holdings is currently extremely overvalued. And in fact, on this channel, we have done many videos reviewing companies. This is ultimately the worst upside we have seen. So again, do take it with a pinch of salt in terms of Wall Street forecasts. If a company starts to do better, they do start to tend to increase their forecasted price. So always do your own due diligence. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments below whether or not Arm Holding is one that you're looking to add to, or maybe you added towards their IPO price around the $60 mark. As always, you can also check out our in-depth review of NVIDIA that we did just yesterday. And don't forget, smash that like button if you enjoyed today's episode. Hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. And as always, catch you on the next one.